Today is a leg day. I'm going to be doing a bunch of machine stuff. For the record, I get asked this question a lot. I don't squat or deadlift because I am recovering from a lower back injury. So I am hoping to get back into squatting and deadlifting in the near future. But for now, I'm living vicariously through Stephanie. She's training for her first powerlifting meet in Florida. And so I just want to take you guys through how it is I would program for a beginner powerlifter. Stephanie's a little bit of an exceptional case because she has a really good muscular foundation already. Today was actually, I'll show you guys this, uh, today was actually the first day that we got snow. Um, so all the rooftops are covered and you can see the mountains. And before we go train, uh, we are gonna go get a new lens, a wider angle lens, something I can like blur the background with a little bit better. So hopefully that will increase the quality of the videos. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, this is like a complete disaster. Now it's organized. That's what happens when you have a woman in your house. How clean and organized that is. What do you eat for your pre-workout? Dry oatmeal. <laughs> no water, no nothing. No. <laughs> I do not know how you do that. You're the only person I know who does that. This is like the poor man's version of the fancy intro workout carb drinks. So this is just glucose fructose. Sometimes my workouts go really, really long when I have to film especially. Sometimes my workout will be two or three hours. So it definitely helps to have some kind of energy source. New J. Cole album just dropped today. All right, guys, so we're here at London Drugs. I just come in here to pick up my new lens. Um, so I'm getting a new 16 millimeter, but I did just pick up a new 50 millimeter lens, which I'm using to take photos. And then this one I'm going to be using for vlogging. I'm really excited to see the difference in quality from this. So, yeah, we're going to run in. I actually like this. It's not too cool. You're crazy. Just bearable, I guess. <laughs> see how many looks I get wearing. If you said that that would be good for like, um, like close up video, yeah. right? Yeah, where you yeah. get more wide angle. Wide angle, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Are these a Canadian thing? I actually don't know. I, I don't know. I they're they they're not in the states, I but I don't know if they're them. only Canadians. You guys have I've all never tried these. Videos. Yes. The reason I'm moving to Canada. All right. Taste test. You gotta be. You gotta give them a rating. Amazing. How many calories in in one? For two biscuits, 180 calories. Oh, and there's nine fat. Dang. Damn. That better be good. Yeah, good. Mmm. You like those? Really good. Yeah. My ratings would be all messed up because, like, to me, this is like, I don't know, like a 10. Under oh, wait, really? <laughs> no, oh. not underwhelming at all. You cannot give your, no. What? A 10 has to be like, everything has to be perfect. Like, the environment, like, circumstance, like, my mood. The presentation. Everything has to be 100%. Okay. I'll give these like a seven. Mm -hmm. Honestly, kind of underwhelmed by this. Kind of. Kind of. It tastes glorious to me. Really? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. I think it's good. I'm gonna go to a five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to Tim Hortons. Look at the snow, it's pretty. <laughs> it is. Mm. Grilled chicken wrap, chicken cheese, kind of chipotle. It's very good. good eh? All right, guys, so we just got to the gym. This is gonna be the last clip on the old lens. Uh, so let me know in the comments below if you notice the upgrade in quality. I uh, really hope that it's good. Check in with you guys. Okay, so guys, welcome to the informative section of the video. Uh, in this commentary, I want to talk about how it is I'd program for a beginner to powerlifting, um, and then get into some of the scientific research behind my style of programming. Before I get into anything, uh, I just want to make it clear what it is that I mean by beginner. I simply mean someone who is pretty new to powerlifting. They haven't done a meet before or really trained that much with the specific goal of gaining strength on the squat, bench press, or deadlift. So just for a rough time frame, let's say anything less than six 
six months of intelligent, strength-specific training would be a beginner status in my books. I also really like the definition that Mark Ripito uses in Practical Programming, where he defines a novice as a lifter who can progress from one workout to the next, an intermediate as a lifter who can progress from week to week, and an advanced trainee as one who can progress from, say, month to month or year to year. So on this definition, as a beginner, generally speaking, you should be able to get stronger each and every workout. And once you no longer are able to do that, you're probably flirting with intermediate territory. Training as a beginner is a special time because you're able to make substantial progress doing pretty much anything, which is something that we call the newbie gains period. And while it's true that you can make substantial gains as a beginner doing pretty much anything, uh, that doesn't mean that you should run just any program that you can land your hands on. And I think Ribito again nailed this point when he said, the thing that differentiates a good program from a less good program is its ability to continue stimulating the desired adaptation. A program that requires a regular increase in some aspect of its stress is an effective program for a novice. But nothing works as well as moderately increasing some loading parameter each time for as long as an adaptation to the increase continues to occur. So in essence, as a beginner, you really want to focus on just incrementally adding weight to the bar in a controlled, non-random way. Secondly, practicing and refining basic lifting form. As a newbie, I think now is the time to correct any bad habits that you might have. As for example, if your hips shoot up when you deadlift, uh, now would be a good time to figure out why that is before you neurologically sort of program in those bad habits that then have to be unprogrammed later down the road. Okay, so now I'd like to put the following commentary in context with what I think is the best hierarchy of priorities for strength training. I'm going to be highlighting specificity and overload. But first, I think it's important to keep in mind that none of this really matters much if you're injured. So while you do need to lift heavy to get stronger, I wouldn't be tempted to go ultra heavy all the time, as I think that success in powerlifting is more so really just a function of having the ability to keep slowly progressing without getting injured. So if you're progressing at all, I would try to be happy with it. So, so Steph, Steph does a double overhand grip with no hook grip, which is insane. I don't even know. I probably can't pull that with double overhand. That's crazy. Like most people will use an over under grip. So one hand is pronated, the other supinated. She uses both hands pronated, which makes it a lot harder. Um, but nonetheless, your grip strength is ridiculous. So if you just switch to over under, you'd be able to, your grip would never be an issue. Grip would never be an issue. Slick, slick talk, keep a bitch mouth running, but you ain't really about this shit. Yeah, I'm about this shit. Keep on keep hating on me, you ain't really about this shit. Appearance of deceiving, keep that block, 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 block. While daily one rep max training does have some solid empirical support, I think this is more apt for really advanced guys and lifters who are on drugs, uh, certainly not beginners and definitely not natural beginners. Okay, so specificity. Basically, this means that you should train with a specific focus on the sport that you're competing in. If you want to get better at the squat, bench press, or deadlift, uh, you should do a lot of squatting, bench pressing, and deadlifting. Further, there is a specific difference between strength and hypertrophy adaptations. In a 2014 paper by Schoenfeld et al, a group performing a bodybuilding style three sets of 10 program was compared with a group doing a powerlifting style seven sets of three program. And while hypertrophy was more or less the same between the groups, the powerlifting style program gained significantly more strength. And this tells us that you need to lift heavy to get as strong as you can. And since a lot of new strength comes from motor learning, I think it's important as a beginner that you first get good at the lifts, which means you need to practice them frequently. Uh, my personal sweet spot for beginners is hitting each lift two to three times per week, as long as you're not taking many or any sets to failure. I'd like to talk about some specific programming examples. Even though it isn't anywhere near required for progress, I do like to use DUP or daily undulating periodization for beginners. And just so we're all on the same page, all that DUP refers to is that some programming variable is changing within the training week. So if the rep count for squats on day one is different at all from the rep count for squats on day three, then this would qualify as a type of DUP. And so I like it not only because it has a good deal of general empirical support in the literature, but because programs that encourage the exact same set and rep structure within the training week, like starting strength for example, just tend to be more boring and I find they can get stale really fast for new lifters. Generally in my experience, it's good to have some variation within the training week so that 
weightlifters aren't going into the gym just doing exactly the same thing day in, day out, even if they could progress just fine doing so. I'd like to give you guys a quick example of what a good program might look like. So the split would be a basic lower, upper, lower, rest, upper, lower, rest, where the first half of the week you'd be squatting and bench pressing for three sets of six reps and do the deadlift for four sets of three reps. Then you'd rest and in the second half of the week bench press and squat for four sets of three reps and then deadlift for three sets of six reps. You just add assistance movements like rows, vertical presses, hip thrusts, rear delt flies, or whatever else you need for muscular development on either the upper or the lower days as appropriate. Uh, so in terms of progression, I think it's smart to stick to a set rep count as a beginner and just add weight over time. Uh, because as a new power lifter, you want to really get better at getting stronger and get used to feeling heavier and heavier weights, not just adding reps at any given weight. And secondly, I do like to occasionally use so-called top sets for beginners, especially on the squat, uh, because I think it does build confidence. For example, if you're running the split that I outlined, if you're used to only hitting, say, three reps or six reps, when you have to do a one rep max, it might feel really intimidating or heavy on your back. Uh, so even just doing occasional single rep sets with sub-maximal load, say 75 to 85% of your one rep max, before beginning the volume work, I think is a good idea. And I'd recommend doing this maybe every other week, certainly not more than once per week for each lift. One word of final advice to powerlifters, uh, I do think it's very important that you listen to your body. Uh, I think it's always better to slow down your progression a little bit over the short term if it means that you can stay in the game longer over the long term. Uh, so yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed the voiceover. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up below. I really appreciate that. Uh, or you can just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you there. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy the final few clips. Black in a white man territory. Okay. Not fussing with the army gun. I'm on track seven of ten neighbors, which is a good song, in my opinion. Um, and this is this is really good. I actually like this song Neighbors, but I think my top two so far are Immortal Mortal. and Deja Vu. Yeah, I, was, I, could have, I could have predicted that. Yeah, that's gonna finish out this vlog. Uh, so thank you so much again for watching. I wanna give a shout out to Stephanie. Um, I know I've mentioned her on the channel like a nice few times, but I know not everyone watches all my videos. Um, so yeah, basically like our story, we, we connected initially on social media then again when I was visiting Tampa, um, which is where she lives and goes to school, um, she's doing a PhD in ovarian, or in research focused on ovarian cancer. Did I get that right? Yes. We're gonna try to pump out a good deal of content. She's super helpful with like the filming and she's the one who gets me all of the peer reviewed studies, uh, access to those uh, for my science based videos. Um, so really, really appreciative. Make sure you go and check out her Instagram. Uh, she is gonna be starting up a YouTube sometime in the new year, uh, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, go check out her Instagram in the description box below. Um, give me a thumbs up for the video, please. Uh, that actually really helps me because it helps the videos come up on like the recommended page. So more subs to my channel, helps the channel grow, which means I can make more money from other sources other than coaching, which means I can produce more content for this channel. So if you want to support me, that's a really easy way for me to do it, or for you to do it. Also, uh, the, the pants, these compression pants that I was wearing uh, from Rise, I will link those in the description below, and I'll link this uh, Rise shirt in the description below, so if you guys want to check it out, you can. Um, subscribe to the channel, please, if you haven't already. You can click the link at the end of the video and do that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.